Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life, to my Pastor Black, to yes. his wife, Evangelist Black, to Eat Diggins and Muggles and everybody in the household of faith on tonight. I give honor to you. It is indeed a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Yeah. Let us just clap and tell Lord God Almighty that we thank him for yet another day yeah. and for our third night of revival. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're going to open up with a song from Sister Joanne. Following the song, we're going to have our scripture by Sister Silver Beth. Following, and our prayer will be by Dick and Edwards. Amen. 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 Come on, can we give God a hand clap of praise in the house on this evening? Come on, come on, let all those that trust in the Lord, let's bless his holy name, hallelujah, hallelujah. I give honor to God for my being here, I give honor to my pastor, my first lady, to evangelist, deacons, mother, saints, saints, and friends. Give honor to you, you and you, give honor to my absent husband. And this song had just been, uh, Sister Brenda was saying the song was staring at her all day. And this song has been staring in my spirit all day. Uh, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon. Just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. For grace to trust him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Many shall see it and fear 
and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respect not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lie. Mm -hmm. Many, O oh Lord my God, are, the, are thy wonderful work which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us were, they cannot be raked up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more that can be known. Amen. Sacrifice and offering thou desirest not. My ears hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering oh, yeah. hast thou not required. Then I said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is written within my heart. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. First, I'd like to say, give it to God, but Pastor, First Lady, to everybody that's in the place, let us pray. Father in heaven, we come as home. We know how. Realize that you God beside me there, no other. You're the first and the last, being and after no week. Oh God, we just want to tell you, thank you, sir. Oh God, thank you for last night's rest. How you let your God name to watch you all night long. While we swim and while we slept. You as soon as you touch it with a finger of love. We were able to rise, head out to our limbs, see our eyes, hear our ears. Oh God, it didn't stop there. You got us down to things, highways. Kept them all her home and name. Oh God, just want to tell you, thank you, sir. Realize how I have been a man, Lord, been a better. Yeah, yeah. We're also over in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Not knowing how much fun we're going. Yeah. But if I take this in the time right now, I tell you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you for your love, your mercy, yeah. your grace. Yeah. Most of all, we thank for saving a right like us. Yeah. Because one day we were lost, but now we're found. We're blind, but now we're seen. Yeah. Oh, God, I just want to tell you, thank you, sir. Yeah. Realize that you've been good to us, still good to us. Yeah. Yeah. We just want to tell you, thank you, sir. Yeah. Oh God, remember those less fortunate who are those in the hospital, prison bound, nursing home, those who won't be getting the tears. You know, I remember each and every one of turning my voice. Trekking so over, reading Bell Talk every time down. Will I get weeks sometime a long way? Oh God, just won't tell you, thank you, sir. Oh God, thank you for our pastor and the Continue the first lady. Continue to bless them in a matter way. Give them their heart desire. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, look on every minister, every pastor, every mother, every bishop. Help them all, preach the same gospel. Tell the dying men, women, boys, and girls that the way to sin and death and the gift of God is eternal life. Oh God, we just want to tell you thank you, son. For you brought us where you couldn't bring out sales. We just want to tell you thank you, son. We realize that we were living in present time. Mother gets daughter, father gets son, earthquakes and down the place. Me and me not the natural faith. What God you said in your word? Yeah. We're here to tell all of these things. Yeah. The end is not yet. Yeah. Just to give sorrow. Yeah. Oh God, we just want to tell you, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you for your word. Yeah. Because your word has been a lap to our feet and light to our pathway. Yeah. Oh God, I just want to tell you, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you for this third third night of revival. Yeah. Oh God, continue to bless our pastor no matter way. Yeah. Tell the dying men, women, and boys, and girls. That's the way of sin and death. It gives God eternal life. Yeah. Oh God, that somebody, somebody might come to you and say, Lord, forgive me for all of my sins. Yeah. Oh God, I just want to tell you, thank you, sir. In the name of Jesus. Have your way to sir. Touch heart, mind, soul, deliver, save and set free. Yeah. Oh God, we'll be here sing our last song, pray our last prayer. We see our soul high night feeling all our sins for you. Yeah. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We thank the Lord for the song, the scripture, and the prayer on tonight. And now it's time for our word. Are we ready for our third night of revival on tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand. It's been a blessing to me. I pray it's been a blessing to you all as well. Amen. We're ready to receive the word by our very own Pastor Gregory B. Black of the St. John Missionary Baptist Church, Soul Saving Center. Let us give him a hand and stand to your feet. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Oh, yes. This day, we thank you for this hour. Thank you. thank you for the third night of revival, Father. We ask you now, God, to just let us down into the storehouse oh, yes. of your knowledge and yep. of your wisdom. Help us yep. to oh, yep. rightly divide the word of truth. God, that it would just touch some out of heart, mind, or soul, oh, yeah. some out of come running and crying. What must I do to be saved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, we pray now, God, that you just have your way. We ask the blessing, all other blessings, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Say good evening to everybody. Those who have a shame today. Amen. Give it all to God, which is the head of my life. Amen. Oh, yeah. Thank God for all he have done, all he's doing, and all. That he is getting ready to do true. God is a good God. God is a gracious God. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Thank God for the third night of revival. Thank God for all the advantage that's here, those that will not be able to thank God for them. Uh, revival is not only for sinners, revival for saved folks too. Amen. Yes, it is. It's for everybody. Thank God for those that pressed their way out, and those that uh, could not come. Amen. And they're watching by copper call or tv or facebook ever how you connected we thank god for everybody on tonight truly uh, i have enjoyed this week I amen. Amen. I, i've been blessed this week the three nights uh, 32 nights was i really have been blessed we ask everybody continue to pray for us revival uh, does not stop here it continues to go on amen, amen. amen. we will get started tonight uh, in our scripture We'll talk about tonight. I want to read three scriptures, then we want to try to get into our teaching part on tonight. Amen. We try to go slow enough so everybody can just Great. follow right along uh, with us. Amen. First two scriptures uh, we want to just read for your hearing from John chapter 8. Verses 31 and 32. Let me read these scriptures for you. John chapter 8, 31 and 32 reads as follows. Then said Jesus, then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, underline, highlight that word truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yes. Let's turn over to dear John chapter 14. John chapter 14, and we want to read verses 5 and 6. John chapter 14, verses 5 and 6. Verse 5, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? Amen. Jesus answered, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, mm -hmm. the truth. That it word again, underline it again. I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto me, the, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Let's turn on over to the book of Galatians. This is Paul writing Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, and we want to read that probably from verses 6 through 9. Verse 6 read, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are the, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we say, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man 
preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Amen. Verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Yeah, that's the word. I want to teach tonight from a plain little subject, the gospel truth. Amen. The Amen. gospel truth. If you go back to St. John, uh, no, if you go back to John chapter 8 and verse 32, Jesus will outline that I am the truth. Also, John 14, he said, I am the way, the truth, Amen. and the light. Amen. And now when we come on over to the book of Galatians, amen, we want to preach, teach tonight about the gospel truth. In Galatians chapter 1, they have received the word of God. And, and, and Paul was letting them know. He said, I marvel. In other words, it really shocked me. It throw me for a loop that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto grace. He said, I, I, I marvel at that. Why? Because we need the gospel truth. And, and then he said, uh, uh, to, unto a, another gospel. And then in verse 7 says, which is not a no. Mm. In other words, there's some false doctrine Amen. is in the atmosphere. So therefore, we need to know the gospel truth. That's the only way that we're going to make it through this land is having the, the gospel truth. Listen to how verse 7 reads. Which is not a no. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert, uh-oh, change it, pervert the gospel of Christ. That's why God was dealing with me about we need the gospel truth. And this is what Paul, Paul said, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel, then that which we have preached unto you is said, let him be accursed. Amen. What Paul was saying, if, if anybody else come behind me and preach anything different, it's right in the text. Amen. If anybody come behind me and preach anything different, it said, let him be accursed. Amen. So therefore, we need the gospel truth. Verse 9. And as, and as we said before, say I now again. I'm, I'm telling you, Paul said, I'm saying it again, just in case you didn't hear me the first time. If any man preach any other gospel unto you that ye have received, let him be accursed. In other words, somebody that brings some other doctrine. There is some false doctrine going around. But Paul was making the Galatians, letting them, letting them know plain. He said, listen. For do I now persuade me or God? Am, am I trying to preach or teach to please the people or God? Do I, do I want to preach and teach things that tickle their ears, the thing that they want to hear? Mm. It's but do I please men? For if I yet please men, this is what he said, I shall not be the servant of God. This is why we have to preach the gospel truth. Everybody don't believe what I preach and teach. Amen. You tell the truth. Amen. Everybody don't believe what other folk preach and teach. But as long as it is the gospel truth, that's right. I don't have to sit up all night and worry about why you didn't receive it as long as I told you the truth. Amen. Oh God, help us right there. And let's go down a couple more verses. We'll soon get out of this. But listen to what Paul said. But I certify you, brethren, 
that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. In other words, Paul would say, brethren, I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the gospel truth now. Yeah. Brethren, I guarantee you the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. Mm -mm, this is what he said. This is what verse 9, 12 said. It said, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. Man didn't teach that to me. He said, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the only way that the gospel truth can be preached or teach is through in by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Human knowledge just won't get it. Let, 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 me, let me try that one more time. Human knowledge, your reading, your study will not get the job done. You have to have a revelation from God. So that's why it's so vital, it's so important that we preach the gospel truth. Now, when, when, when you preach the gospel truth, this is a teaching revival. When, when, we, when we preach the gospel truth, it's going to hit somebody. Amen. Not only it's going to hurt somebody, it's going to touch somebody. It's going to change somebody. Somebody's going to get upset. But guess what? You still got to preach it. Amen. We still have to teach it. See, we have gone so far from this Bible until it's a cry and shame. We have drifted so far from the word. If God don't come and get us and bring us back to it, we will never make it back. Because you can look in the world now and you can see that they're trying to call right, wrong, trying to call wrong, right. They are trying to change things. But guess what? You will never live long enough to see the world change the word of God. Well, so they didn't get a whole lot of amen that time, but I'm going to say it. You would never live long enough. Mm -mm, because he said what he meant, and he meant what he said. So therefore, none of us would live long enough to see the word of God being changed. But it's vital. It's important that we preach, that we teach the unadulterated word of God. I believe it's in John, uh, St. John chapter 14, probably around verse 6. Jesus said these words out of his mouth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. That's why we need the true gospel. Now listen, I know sometimes we get in motion and, and we invite people out of town, in town, round town, and downtown. Oh, yeah. But watch this. And, and they come by and just, you know, you know, put all this stuff all on us and they have a line all the way to the door. <laughs> sometimes them folk falling out, they ain't falling out called the spirit. See where we at now? And, and, and tell you, you know, turn around three times and seven days, go to the mailbox. Some of y'all still live in the mailbox. Been seven years, still ain't got nothing. That's not going to get the job done. We need to know the gospel truth. Every chance, every privilege we get, we need to preach the gospel truth. And, and, and preaching the gospel truth. It is dividing, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. See, most of the time we want to go in a service or either we want to get in a setting that calls us to shout. But if you're not living there, now you finish shouting, you can say that in it. Amen. The church is the wrong place to exercise. And one more church said body exercise profit. Uh oh. Oh, the problem was nothing. It's nothing wrong with shouting. I holler, I run it. Nothing, nothing in the world wrong with that. But guess what? I'm going to have to know the truth. Amen. Tell me the truth. Amen. Don't sugarcoat nothing for me. Amen. I need to know if I'm wrong. Amen. I need to know where I'm hit. See, you need to know that. You don't need to be on your way to hell and folk tell you it's going to be all right and it's not going to be all right. Amen. 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 I wish I had a couple hours tonight because I got something that I need to say. 
I'm going to jump off my notes and come right back. Okay. It has been a time that when a man will mess up, the brother will be so strong in the church that they will call him all to the side and say, come on, go with me tomorrow. They, he he, they, he think he's going off to eat. <laughs> Next thing he know, that brother of the church said, look, these things that you're saying, these things that you're doing, that do not become a brother. Mm. Amen. They will set you down and, and, and tell you the gospel truth. Yeah, that's right. Even sometimes if a young lady mess up, whatever situation, the mother will be so strong to say, "Come on, baby, say, say, can she spend the day with me? I want her to help me around the house." And you work your way in. That's right. Sit down and talk to them. Tell the baby, say that the lifestyle that you live with that don't represent Christ. It really don't. Can, can I be real? Then I get right back my note. It, it really don't look good. I see you every Sunday come to church, and and by, you know every three months a different dude. <laughs> just, just, I mean, he said, I, I mean, it, it don't look good as a young lady. See, we don't want to tell them that truth. Why? Because we're going to lose a friend. Yeah. Who cares if you lose a friend? I'm going to lose a friend and lose my soul. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Oh, I know that's right. Amen. Amen. See, that what we got to give the gospel truth. Yeah. Let, let me hit one more Old Testament and then I'll get back to it. It, it, it talks about how the watchman's on the wall in the book of Ezekiel. You know, no one going with that. How, you know, they said they set the watchman on the wall. In other words, the preacher. And he's supposed to warn them. And guess what? If he don't warn them, if he warned them, the blood won't be required on his hand. But if I fail to warn them, if, do you see what I'm saying? Let's see what I'm going there. I, I can't help my brother got an attitude or two of that. I still want to tell her what's right. But no, just because you know, she's a great type here, she come to church. No, I just want to give her the gospel truth. Amen. If she never speaks to me no more, that's her business. At least I gave her the truth. Amen. And we don't want to give people the truth because we are so afraid we're going to lose a friendship. I'd rather lose a friendship and have my soul right than have all the friends in the world and die and go to hell. Ooh. I'm talking about the gospel. True. True. Amen. Let, let, let tell somebody the gospel. True. Gospel true. Tell them we, we need the gospel truth. We need the gospel truth. Amen. Let, let me turn back and, and read another read what script I started out. Listen. And you don't have to turn to it. In John chapter 8 and verse 29. I mean, John, I mean, chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. I want to read that and we're going to be moving. Listen to what he said. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, if ye, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Mm -hmm. This is what he said in verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. We all need the truth. the truth. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Let me tell you something. It's best for us to know the truth now than find out the truth later on. Let me try it again. It's better for us to know the truth now than find out the truth a little later on in life. Let, let, let's move right along. We've got good ways to go. Listen. We need to know the truth. Mm. But some, not some, but the gospel truth. Mm. The world today mm -hmm. need to know the gospel truth. Amen. As I first stated, if I'm wrong, I need to know that I'm wrong. Amen. If I'm lost, I need to know that I'm lost. It's important, it's vital that we preach the truth, that we teach the truth, 
that we live the truth. Amen. Paul made this statement like this. It's in the scripture. Paul made this statement. He said, woe unto me if I preach any other gospel. Danger's going to happen to me if I preach any other gospel. Listen, everything that you hear is not the truth. Amen. This is why come we needed such the scripture. And find out because in them you think you have eternal life. Everything that we hear is not always the truth. Amen. But guess what? The truth is the only thing that's going to stand. Amen. Let me try that one again. I said the truth is the only thing that's going to stand. The word, the gospel. It's going to stand when everything else is falling down. Amen. Watch this. There, there, there's a lot of false doctrine going on. Amen. So that's what we need to, know, need to know the gospel truth. Yes. Watch this. The gospel truth is the power of truth. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. I, I believe it's in Romans chapter 1, maybe verse 16, somewhere around there, where, where Paul made this statement. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God. Oh, we got it now. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. And the reason we need to know the gospel truth, because it is the power of God unto salvation. Watch what I'm saying. Listen. It will penetrate. This is why come we really need to preach the gospel truth because it will penetrate. Because it is like a two-headed sword. It will cut gone and it will cut cunning. Yeah. I, I will have to call the end of his name, but I think it was Sunday. I think it was this past Sunday went by when I preached about judgment day. Mm -hmm. This individual, you know, got in contact with me, etc. Say, you no, know I said I was in my lounging clothes. And said it scared me. I won't change my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you have to preach the truth. Amen. The gospel truth. And when we, when we preach the gospel truth, you may not see people hollering. You may not see them running. You may not see them crying. But when the gospel truth is being preached, guess what it do? It penetrates. Oh my God. See, see, most of the time folks say, we're folks say that they ain't paying me no mind. Sometimes new quiet folks that want really taking it all in. And them folks that are keeping all that noise, sometimes they're missing the point. That's why we need to come to Bible study and have teaching re revival like this. It's preaching, nothing wrong with preaching, but guess what? Sometimes we just need just a slow rain of teaching. And we need the word of God. This is why come you need to read and study and pray for yourself. That when I come, when the next person come and open the Bible, you can follow along. Because if you read the Bible long enough, I promise you, when somebody preach, you're going to come across where they, you, they going to come across where you at. Amen. 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 And I said, when we preach the gospel truth, mm, it penetrates and it starts from the inside and it work, it penetrates itself to the outside. We need the gospel truth True. Yes. Yes. at my house, at your house, yes, sir. and at the White House. All of our houses need the gospel truth. Amen. The reason why we need the gospel truth because it will direct us spiritual. It will correct you spiritual. It will instruct you. It will inform you. And it will strengthen you. And that ain't all. It will comfort you. And it will encourage you. And it will save you. And it will deliver you. Mm. The world needs the gospel truth. Mm. Some is trying to change the word, train the gospel. Mm. But guess what? The gospel, the truth is, it is the mind of God. It is the will of God. And it is the purpose of God. 
See, the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation is God thinking pattern, God's mind. If you want to know how he feel about something, you want to know how he thinks about something, if you want to know his positive, his negative, his do's, his don't, his commands about something, just read. Listen, this is the mind of God. Yes, it is. This is why come every time when we get up, we need to preach the gospel truth. Why? Because it's, it's God's mind. Yes. And we need to get God's mind out on your mind. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing just to know the gospel truth. Watch what I'm getting ready to say. You can be, listen, the gospel truth is so powerful until you can build on the truth. Mm, let me try it again. You can build on the truth. Everything that is built is built on some types of foundation. Yes. Now, what are you building on? Jesus said, there is no other foundation laid that is laid. I, I, I'm merely saying now that Jesus Christ is our foundation. Amen. You can build on him. He's a sure it's a sure, thank you ma'am, it's a very sure foundation. Some is building on their education. Some is building on their money. Some is building on their job. Some is building on their money. But all of this stuff will soon vanish away. Yes. But if you build on Jesus, yes, when the storms of life come, you'll be able to stand. When the tornadoes of life come, yes. that's why that's why we're still standing because somebody been building on Jesus Christ. Yes. I, I didn't ever say you will never cry. I didn't ever say it won't be no dark time, no down time. But if you build on Jesus, yes. you'll be able to Weather the storm. Have I got a witness here? Amen. We can go to the book of Luke in chapter 6 and probably around verse 39, 49. It talks about the works of Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ's foundation is adequate. In other words, it will hold you. Mm. Now let me try it again. It will hold you. Oh, Listen. Yeah. Failing to build on Jesus Christ's foundation, you are headed for destruction. In other words, when I said build on Jesus' foundation, build on the word. Yeah. Whatever the word said, let's have faith and trust and confidence in the word. Yeah. This is why come we need the gospel truth. Amen. And when you get the gospel truth, you will have something to carry you through your tough time, through your difficult time, through your trying time. And when you're sick and going through, David said, yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will feel no evil. Why? Because thou Oh, it's good when the Lord, I'm going to try it again. It's good when the Lord is with you. God, what time is running out. Listen, when, when we have the gospel truth, guess what? You will be able to want to be, obe be obedience to Christ. Uh oh See, the foundation of the church and of all believers should be built on Jesus Christ. Amen. The pastor, the deacon, the officer of the church, all of it should be built on Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen. Jesus Christ is the blueprint of our foundation. Listen. A building, a person is only as solid as their foundation. Woo! A building or a person is only as solid as their foundation. Now in the back of my mind, who, who and what you are building on? But if you have the gospel truth, you can build on Jesus Christ. Watch this. Any other foundation apart from Jesus Christ, it will fail. If you build on anything else, Amen. it Amen. will fail. Let, let me try it again. It went over somebody here. If you build on anything else other than Jesus Christ, it eventually will fail. But when you have the gospel truth, you can stand when it look like everything else is going in the opposite direction. Amen. Let me try it one more time. That's why it's so vital. That's why it's so important that we have the gospel truth. Listen. The gospel truth is about the cross. Amen. Let me try it again. The gospel truth is about the cross. See, the cross 
is the center of the gospel. Oh, yeah. See, when, when we preach and when we teach, if we do not teach or either preach or come cross to the cross, we haven't done much. Right. Uh oh. Amen. We got to preach the cross. Amen. What's so great about the cross? This is why come we need to preach the gospel truth. Let's start out with this like this. Because if, if we preach the gospel truth, it will redeem you and I Amen. from our iniquity. Yeah. Let, let me try it again. I said, if we preach and teach the gospel truth, yes. it will lead us to the cross. Yes. And then the cross is what redeemed us from all our iniquity. When Jesus redeemed us from all our iniquity, guess what happened? It gave us a new life. Yeah. The purpose of the gospel of truth at the cross, it is that it we might bring us to God. This is why come we need to preach the gospel of truth. I, I, I try to work around our mind with running so God just kept bringing me right back and said, we, we got to have the gospel of truth. Listen, because the gospel of truth will bring us to God. Amen. Let, let, let me tell y'all something. It's, it's all good. You can buy all the minivans you want. You know, you can build all the family life you want. You put all the playground you want. We got to do something to get the truth. We got to do, listen, all of that is good, but guess what? If they don't have the word, they ain't going to stay. Amen. I'm going to say that again. You can have all the activities that you want. And folks say, well, I, I, we got to have us a gym. We, we got to have a family. We got to have, listen, uh, listen, you don't have to have all of that. Only thing you got to do is preach the gospel truth. Amen. When you preach the gospel truth, guess what? It'll be there when everybody else has walked away. Did you not know the word of God was start to saturate in your heart? And when nobody else around, guess what? You can just reminisce on that word. And guess what? When you start to feel yourself going down, you can think about the gospel truth. You can think about the word of God. And it will start to picking you right back up. Amen. Oh, yeah. Now, the purpose of the gospel truth is the cross because the cross is the center. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. I said the cross is the center. Yeah. In other words, when we preach the gospel truth, it will bring us to God. Uh, hear me good. Now, God, this is good. When we preach or either teach the gospel truth, it will bring men and women to God not as criminals but they will bring you to God as blood-washed sons and daughters. Let me try again. I'm saying when we preach the gospel truth, it will bring us to God not as criminals, but it will bring you and I to God as blood-washed sons and daughters. I don't know about y'all, but I've been blood-washed. Oh. Oh, and the iron soap wouldn't do it. Dove wouldn't do it. But it's something about being blood what? Amen. This is why I come sometimes when people are preaching the word of God and you're sitting quiet. And guess what? It starts from your head and go all the way down. And when once that word get in you, guess what? It'll come back up. To sonships with yeah. God. Yeah. Bring us into the family of God. Yeah. When we preach the gospel truth of the cross, amen. The cross that it might deliver us from our past evil and from our present evil. Uh oh. This, this, this is why I come. We, you don't need to come to church to make folk feel good. Y'all come on, let's shout. Come on and give God a prayer. All of that is good, but guess what? If you don't mean it from your heart, you just wouldn't take a lot of extra shot. See, see, when, when this thing is real, when there's no drum, when there's no good talk, when there's no organ, and when there's no quiet, you still can feel the power. You still can feel the presence of God. What is this that make me want to holler when I'm right home by myself? What is this that make me want to give God some praise? Gospel. Yes, sir. Truth, man. When we get it 
praise like that, God will bless her. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. I'm talking about the gospel truth. I went back and started studying on some of my notes and started reading and reading and listening. And I found some of the things that I had a couple years ago that I preached in, in the New East Convention. Watch, watch this. When we talk about the gospel truth, I found out that Abraham Lincoln said, listen what he said. He said, Abraham Lincoln said it like this. He that believeth the Bible is the best gift that can ever be given. That, that, that's what Abraham Lincoln said. He, he said, I, I believe that the Bible, which is the gospel truth, is the best gift that ever could be given. Amen. Thomas Jefferson said that the Bible, I believe, he, he, that's what Thomas Jefferson said, I, I believe that the Bible, being preached of the gospel truth, will make better citizens, will make better fathers, and better husband and have better generation if we just have the gospel truth preached to us. George Washington said, said, it is impossible for us to rightly to govern the world without the gospel. God. Yeah, yes, he did. I, I said, George Washington said, it is impossible for us to govern the world without the gospel. In other words, the gospel truth, it helped people that's in government system. That's why I said, I needed it at my house. You needed it at your house. And you know they needed it at the White House. Amen. Mm. Robert Lee said, I believe that the gospel truth, and it is right, and it will never fail. It will always give you light. It will always give you strength. Mm -hmm. Horace Good has said, said that the Bible is a grounded word for human freedom. Mm -hmm. Charles Dickens said, the best book that ever will and ever be known in the world because heaven and earth will pass away, but the gospel, the word of God, it will stand forever. The Bible said that the grass wither and the flower faded away, but the word of God will stand forever. Brothers and sisters, that's why I come tonight. It's so important that we preach the gospel truth. Why we need to preach the gospel truth? Because it is the Bible. It is God's eternal word. And when I looked at this thing from God's eternal word, the Bible, the book, the word, the information of God, you can't, listen, you can't destroy it. It's incorruptible, it's indispensable, it's infallible, it's exaltable. This book of truth is a different book. Amen. Mm. Amen. That's why we need to preach the gospel truth. truth. A few more points and we'll soon get there. Everywhere that you read in the New Testament, you will find out that Apostle Paul was preaching the unadulterated word of God. And guess what? He like the laws his life. Amen. Preaching the word. But guess what? He preached the true gospel. Even though that they put him on a condemned ship, even though they locked him up, even though they let him down in a bastard. But, but guess what? He keep he kept right on preaching the gospel truth. But guess what? When people, when people get upset with us and we get upset with people, we don't want to preach the truth. But did you not know we supposed to preach the truth whether they want to receive it or whether they reject it? We still need to preach the gospel truth. So everywhere that Paul went, he, 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 he preached. Nothing but the unadulterated word of God. He preached the word of God. And whether they received it or not, even this, this was Paul that told Timothy as, as a young pastor, he, and he was getting ready to face death, getting ready to die. He began to tell him, he said, listen, he said, preach the word. In. See, no, he said, I charge you. He, in other words, I charge you to preach the word in season. Pre preach the word out of season. He said, because the time it will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. He said, they will have itch your ear. He said, but I charge you to preach the word of God. If they pay you preach it, if they don't pay you, still preach it. If they don't want to hear, still preach the word. And know what Paul said? He said, because the time of my departure is at hand. In other words, he said, I finished my course. I run my all my race. But he said, I've been faithful. 
but you will have to preach the word of God. Yeah. That ain't all. You'll find that Apostle Paul, he preached his same gospel right out there on Mars Hill. He didn't have no problem preaching the word of God, and he knew some didn't like it, and he knew that they were rejected, but guess what? He still preached the gospel truth. Listen, when you, you, you can go home and go to sleep when you've done what God told you to do. Amen. When you have sung the song that God told you to say, you can go home and go to sleep. When, when you have preached exactly what God have told you to preach, exactly like God tell you to preach it, you can go home and go to sleep. But you're going to have to give the gospel truth. If you want more, we'll soon get out of here. Paul, Paul just kept right on preaching that word of God. And that's why I come out like Apostle Paul because he, he was right flat for it. He preached the flat truth. And even, even in Corinth, when Corinth had problems, guess what? Sometimes there were Paul's in prison writing a letter. He said, I heard that there's a division among you. And then Paul was sending letters back out how to get that thing straight out. He preached nothing but the word of God. That's what you and I need to do is preach the gospel truth. That's what every pastor, every bishop, every martyr, every time that you mount the pulpit, you need to preach the gospel truth. I'm about through. Watch this. Let me call one more. No, a few more. <laughs> Pete, Peter. You know, Peter had a problem that this ring wouldn't work. Not that his breath was bad, but he just had a foul language. Yeah. He was said stuff that wasn't pleasant. But God used him. Watch what I'm saying. There was a time when Peter preached the gospel truth. Oh, yeah. He preached it so profound. He preached it so forceful. To guess what? That was 3,000. See somebody else ready to shout? Oh, yeah. But guess what? He, he, didn't, he didn't get up there and say, y'all, come on, y'all. Let's turn around three times and God going to bless us anyhow. He got right up there and just preached the word of God. When you preach, let me tell you something. When you preach the, the, the gospel truth, it may seem like, it may look like nobody paying attention, nobody here, but you keep on preaching. It's touching somebody's heart. And you know what? I, I, I can prove that. Listen to what he said. He said, because my word will not go out there and come back born. So whatever what God has told me to preach the gospel truth, if whatever God sent that word out there, it's going to do what God sent it out for to do. The gospel truth. You won't point me to soon be through. So therefore, Peter, he just kept right on preaching. Mm -hmm. Simon said in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1. Yeah, yeah, Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 12. You read it at your letter of time. He's read in there. Listen, the Bible said that he, was, he, he went down to a city called Samaria. Mm -hmm. And those people were rich down there. Oh, yeah. Keep in mind. He went down there. Philip went down there. And Philip went down. Listen, this is good. This is good teaching. Listen, you, you won't ever read where Philip preaches trial sermon. Amen. No. Amen. You, Amen. you don't ever read where they gave him a license. Amen. You don't ever read where they are. Amen. But Philip went down to Samaria. And I believe it's between verses 11 and 12, somewhere in the neighborhood. He preached Jesus. He preached the gospel. True. True. And guess what? And the scripture said they believed Philip preached. In verse 8 or either verse 5. And he said there was joy. Oh, somebody else read that too. There, there was joy. In that city. Yes, so you got to keep right on people. And you keep on reading in that same chapter. Maybe verses from 20 to around verse 30 somewhere. Keep right on reading. You'll catch up where I'm located. Said, what? He said that was a unit man. Mm -hmm. oh, he was yeah. on a chair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it talked like he, he had the Holy Writ. Oh, yeah. He was trying read. to read the word. Yeah. And talked like Philip. And said, the, uh, understanding yeah, what, what you're reading. Oh, yeah. He said, how can I understand unless somebody help me? And, and, and talk like Philip just picked his foot up and got right up in the chair. They got right up in the chair with him. Yes, sir. And you know what? 
I, I don't have time to finish that list, but without a shout of a doubt, when Philip got up in the chariot with him, I, I, I promise you, he was preaching the gospel truth. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, you know, because listen at this. If you read that chapter, how God help you to teach it. When you read that chapter out, you'll find out that that young man said, you got to pray. He said, hey, wait a minute. He said, said there's some water. He said, what's hindering me now for getting baptized? That let me know he had to be preaching. Oh, yeah. the gospel truth. Yeah. See, wait, wait. When you preach the gospel truth, guess what? People will come and want to be saved. They'll want to be baptized. God, God took him. God worked with him. Why? Because Philip just stood right with the gospel truth. And I tell you something else I, I, I found out. Uh, Philip didn't have a choir. He didn't have no deacons. He don't even say where he belonged to church yet. <laughs> but he, he just went on and just preached the gospel truth. It, it doesn't even say that about he had a church. Everybody want to get behind the pulpit. What's wrong out there? Amen. Amen. It's more work on the outside than it's on the inside. I got a few people to me through. But guess what? He preached the on adult word of God. Now, I, I got to call my friend and my brother. Amen. Apostle Paul, he my friend and my brother too. But I got another one a little bit older. He made a little older here. Can I call him? I, I'm pretty sure he's home by now. I'm pretty sure if I don't call him, I'm going to email him. I'm going to text him. I'm going to get in contact with him real quick. I'm going to call John the Baptist. John the Baptist preached the gospel truth. Yes, he did. When John was out there preaching, John didn't have a sanctuary like this. Didn't have a microphone like this. Did not have a choir stand. Did, did not have all the beauty of God help me here. Did not have all the stuff like we had. But it said that John was out there preaching. It's right in the text. It said John was out there preaching in the wilderness. And, and people would leave their home just to go out there. See, John started a revival because he was preaching the word of God. And, and John was, guess what? John called them snakes. <laughs> John said it like this. He said, yo, generation of viper. He said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He said, the axe is still laid at the root of the tree. Oh, God, help me to preach up in here. So we got to preach. Listen, if you preach the gospel truth, people will come far in there just to hear the word. There's somebody tonight that they wasn't able to drive. They wasn't able to get out. I don't know about y'all, but I feel the show of Holy Ghost in here. They, they weren't able to get out. But you know what they said? They said at 7 o'clock, said, oh, black going to be home. I'm going to tap in there. I'm going to see what he's saying tonight. Amen. No doubt somebody sitting on the couch crying right now. Somebody calling over and said, God, I need you to help me right now. Why? Because when you preach the gospel truth, you don't have to be present. God can go exactly where you're located. Hallelujah. Watch this. God, to my listen. Watch this. Bible said that John is ready to take judge. John, his hair wasn't like mine. And yo, you know. You know, his, his hair was like can like, you know. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all neat. Yeah. He, he didn't eat steaks and oh, yeah. ribeye. Right. But he had locusts mm -hmm. and oh, wild honey. Did right. everybody know what locusts is? Oh, yeah. We call them grass, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Did you follow what I'm saying? But guess what? John was preaching the unadulterated word of God. He was preaching the gospel truth. And guess what? People went out there. Boy. Listen, they went out there in the wilderness just to hear John preach. Yes, they did. And see, God, this is good. And it got to a point one time that they thought that John was the Messiah. Boy. Because, you know, he baptized and did more. But guess what? John didn't take no credit. John said, I, I, I'm not the Messiah. He said, but there, there, there is coming one. There's, oh, my, there, oh, there's coming one. There's one than I. He said, who shoot that I'm not worthy to bear? He is the one. The 
of God for true. Amen. Let's go home. <laughs> but that's not the way that, that, that story ends. Yeah, that's right. Let, let's back up a few more steps. John was out there baptized. Oh, yeah. And John made this statement. He said, I, I, I baptize you with water mm -hmm. unto repentance. Uh, he said, but there's coming one. He said, who shoes that I'm not even worthy to unlatch myself. And John said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. It won't long for the one that John was talking about showed up. Say, you know what? I, I saw digging errors yesterday. I did sin. That's true. But guess what? We need to know the gospel truth. Amen. Because the gospel truth is the only thing that's going to save you. Amen. The only thing that's going to deliver you. Yeah. It's the only thing that's going to bring you out. Amen. And this is where we need to get back to is the gospel truth. Amen. And the reason we need to get to the gospel truth. 
because souls are being lost. Amen. And guess what? If we give you the gospel truth, your soul won't be required on our hand. Amen. I hope I said something these three nights that will help us along the way. Because if we have the gospel truth and let it lead us and guide us and direct us, we can live Amen. a better Christian life. Amen. You know, it's getting late in the evening. It's sad now that, you know, you go to church on Sunday and say, boy, we had a good time. What preach? I don't know, but God knows we had a time. Uh, I mean, there's no way in the world that you can eat a half a banana pudding that don't, know, don't taste the banana. Amen. I mean, you've been in church two or three hours and don't know what nothing was said. Amen. Amen. We got to be sure that they're preaching the gospel truth. Maybe there's a son, a daughter, husband, wife, etc., who's just listening tonight that do not know Christ in the pardon of your sin. You can come now. I don't care what you have said. I mentioned it last night, what you have done. Guess what? You can be saved no matter how bad your sins are. Will you come? I have given you the gospel truth. And when you have the gospel truth, if your soul be lost, it will be nobody's fault oh, yes. but your own. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, we're in the heaven. We come this evening, Father, to just tell you thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Amen. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, God, for all that's been said and done on tonight. And Father, I realize tonight, if we teach, if we preach the gospel oh, truth, yes. the blood won't be required on our hand. Father, we pray now, God, will you search all of our heart, search our minds, search our soul. And Father, whatever is there that's not pleasing, that's not acceptable in thy sight, Father, we bid it to move right now. Father, we pray for those that's down, those that's out sick and shedding in the hospital, the private home, the prison bound, wherever they may be. Father, we pray for our children and grandchildren. Father, we pray that you would just save them, deliver and set them free. Father, all of us have family members that's not where they're supposed to be. Father, we pray that you touch their heart, touch their mind, touch their soul. Realize that God, you're in the saving bed. Realize that God, the sun is going down. Father, it's getting late in the evening. Father, people are leaving here. Father, the one that's not leaving, they are killing. But Father, we pray that God prepare all of our hearts and our mind and our soul. That Father, that when you return, God, judgment day is on the way. Father, when you come back, we will be right. And Father, you will accept us. Father, as we leave this place, but not your presence. Father, lead us and guide us and protect us up and down the dangerous highway and byway. Now may the grace of our Lord let it rest, root, and abide with us all, henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say amen. amen. We would like to say, yeah, thank you, man. We would like to say that we know that this coming Sunday uh, is fifth Sunday and we will be to the union and you're welcome to come. We can get a hundred in. Amen. You're welcome to come. We'll be there at 10 o'clock. Amen. But uh, the brother will still be here. You still can come and pay your tithes and all that, etc. But I will be to the temple. Amen. We'll be there at 10 o'clock. So I will not be here on Sunday morning. That's fifth Sunday. Amen. So you, you still can click on. You can come down there. You, you can click on either way. But if Mama said if the creek don't ride and we be here, I'm coming back here Sunday morning. That first Sunday morning. Amen. And we're going to try and work on it again. Amen. Amen. All right. Enjoy the revival, y'all.